So in this video, we're going to be doing a little bit of freebasing. When people think of freebasing, the first thing that pops in their head is usually drug related. However, this process is definitely not something that's only used for making drugs or working with drugs. In very simple terms, freebasing simply means converting an amine from its salt form to its pure form. Because amines are slightly basic, when they're mixed with an acid, an acid-base reaction will occur and they'll produce a salt. The salt form of the amine is more water-soluble and it has different properties than the basic form, so it's used in different ways. The most classic form of freebasing that people are familiar with is the conversion of cocaine to crack. However, in our video, we're luckily going to be sticking on the more legal side and we're going to be freebasing a little bit of phenylhydrazine. I made phenylhydrazine in a previous video, but for my syntheses, I need the freebase. The freebasing method is pretty simple, and it simply is mixing your hydrochloride amine salt with a base to liberate the freebase. Depending on what you are freebasing though, the method does differ, and the base that you use can also differ depending on what you're doing. In my case, I'll simply be mixing my phenylhydrazine hydrochloride salt with some sodium hydroxide, to make sodium chloride and my free base. The first thing I do is prepare 25% sodium hydroxide solution. To do this, it's pretty simple, and I simply add 25 grams of sodium hydroxide to a beaker and then top it off to 100 milliliters. 100 milliliters of this solution is pretty overkill, and in reality, we only really need 10 milliliters of it. The sodium hydroxide will react with our hydrochloride salt and it will liberate the free base. I weighed out 7.6 grams of phenylhydrazine hydrochloride, which is actually everything that I had left. I then directly added the powder to a separatory funnel. Once all the phenylhydrazine had been added, I poured in a little bit of water. I just show here that the phenylhydrazine hydrochloride is totally insoluble in the water. And now to this little slurry, I start pouring in the sodium hydroxide solution. I kept pouring it in and shaking until it looked like there were no more solids left. So what we start with is phenylhydrazine hydrochloride, and when it's reacted with the sodium hydroxide, we get the free base phenylhydrazine and sodium chloride. The free base will be soluble in organic solvents, and the sodium chloride will remain in the water. In the end, I probably used way too much of the sodium hydroxide solution, but it doesn't really matter. You can see that when it's allowed to stand, an oil seems to appear at the top. This is good because at around room temperature, phenylhydrazine free base is an oil that's immiscible with water. You should also notice that the water took on a little bit of a red color, and this is because there's some of the phenylhydrazine free base dissolved in it. So now we need to extract the free base from this mixture, and to do this we add 50 milliliters of dichloromethane. We then take the separatory funnel off the stand and we shake it thoroughly with frequent venting. It's then placed back onto the stand and the layers are allowed to settle. You'll notice that the lower DCM layer is now pretty red. Once the layers have settled, we drain off the lower DCM layer which contains the phenylhydrazine and we leave the water behind. The extraction was repeated two more times using 25 milliliters of dichloromethane each time. On the last washing, you'll notice that the DCM layer is only faintly yellow and the water layer is faintly pink. This is good because it indicates that the vast majority of the phenylhydrazine free base has been extracted out. So now we're left with about 100 milliliters of a dichloromethane phenylhydrazine solution. It's a little bit wet with water, so the first thing that we do is we add molecular sieves. When the sieves are added, it looks like the solution gets darker, but there's not actually a reaction occurring. I found out in the end that the solution wasn't just cloudy because of water, and because of this I kind of ended up adding way too many sieves. When allowed to stand, the solution clears up, but it still remains a little bit cloudy. The sieves are then separated by filtering it through a cotton plug. You'll notice that once our solution is separated from the sieves, it actually lightens up again. 
The filtered sieves are then washed a few times with dichloromethane. I then set up a distillation to isolate our beautiful free base. After like 30 minutes, we're left with very little DCM and we're very close to getting our free base. Something about 10 minutes later, the distillation is done and you can see a nice red oil at the bottom. When I shake the flask around, the stuff sticks to the side and we can see that we indeed do have an oil. One unfortunate thing is to get the oil out of the round bottom, we're going to have to redissolve it in a little bit of solvent. I happened to be in the lab the next day, so I decided to try to filter my solution through some silica gel to see if it will clear up. Once everything was done filtering through, it looked a little bit clearer, but it was still a little bit cloudy. At this point, I figured it wasn't really worth trying to clear it up, and I just evaporated off all the solvent. So, in the end, we were left with a measly 1 gram of phenylhydrazine freebase. Normally, phenylhydrazine freebase is faintly yellow to colorless, but when exposed to air, it slowly takes on a red color. It has a melting point of around 20 degrees Celsius, so when it's put in the freezer, it should solidify like this. Anyway, the really low yield kind of shows that the synthesis of the phenylhydrazine hydrochloride is not as efficient as I thought it was. Clearly, there was a lot of junk present, which probably stayed behind in the water when we were extracting from it. In the end though, the yield isn't too important because this is the final step for my synthesis of scatol and I don't really need much to do it. So again, we have the list of all the videos I'm working on and the future videos, and in the comments you can vote on what you want to see next and I'll try to get that video uploaded next. So remember if you like my videos you should subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.